Hi everyone, my name is Sean Stone, and uh, today we're going to be covering the LAMP scoreboard. Uh, bottom line up front, uh, we are a company called Launcher Analytics. We make it much easier for you to make good decisions on Amazon and spend less time hunting for data. Uh, you can find more about us at getlauncher.com. This is a blog post that's entirely free, and we're going to walk you through step by step how to get all the same metrics we do just by getting them manually. So, um, really, there's, <laughs> first of all, we call it LAMP because it's the Lantra account management process. And the LAMP scoreboard is one of the ways that we like to get a baseline before we start implementing our process on accounts. So in general, this is the whole process. We're planning, implementing, reacting, and then coming back to planning. And we try to keep that on a really, really tight feedback loop. And so when you actually drill down a little bit, the steps are planning the goals, promoting your products, optimizing your SKUs, managing your inventory, managing your account, and then reviewing your performance. And all that so you can really, really quickly and simply uh, crush it on Amazon. If you want to learn more about LAMP, you can actually just go click on this link and it'll bring you right over there. Uh, if you want to get a template so you can fo follow along with this video, you can just click this link or you can fill in your email right here. Either way, it's going to take you to something looks, that looks like this. And then um, you'll get an email that looks like this. You click on this and then voila, you just need to make yourself a copy. Now you have your very own template. You can use this as many times as you want. Just keep making a copy and you'll be all good. Um, great. So uh, I actually filled out a marketing copy, but the steps that we need to take are as followed. So obviously you need to go through this, get a baseline and Generally speaking, the real outcome that we want to get is a score for every department. So um, what you want to do is kind of decide what your scores are, write them down, and then see how you're doing compared to them. Normally, this takes 30 minutes or less, and uh, it gives you a ton of output. This is where the video will be when you come through. Okay, so getting started. We're going to be starting by establishing a baseline, and one of the things you want to do when you're establishing a baseline is write down your goals. So I wrote down some basic ones inside of the template. So if you come to SOP steps, just take a look right here. Um, so we've got the same drawing right here and the departments are all written out. So strategic planner is generally speaking the CEO. This can all be done by any one person in the business. Uh, maybe this, the CEO does all this and then this is all done by a VA. Maybe it's all just you. Maybe there's a different person for every single department. It doesn't really matter. But the point is, we want to get ourselves into a position where we can see how things are going. So what you need to do is write, well, you know, yeah, write down who it's going to be. Feel free to put your name. So, Sean. And then put a name beside each of these. Then write down your goal and try to be as specific as possible. So over 50% of our sales are coming from organic. That's the kind of thing that we're gonna to wanna to be able to quantify and then measure against as we go through this. Um, no ASINs are out of stock. So if any ASIN is out of stock or at risk of going out of stock, that means we failed or we are not necessarily hitting our baseline yet. And that's the point of this column right here. We either tell ourselves if we are on track or if we are missing, and we're gonna write down what our plan will be, but that's a future step. So once we've gotten the template ready, the next thing you need to do is download all the reports. Now, because I don't want to go and do all the video editing and because I think if you're watching this video, you're probably smart enough to figure out how to do it already. All you have to do is download each of these reports and we laid out how to do it right here all the way through. So once you've downloaded all those reports, you need to go and paste the data in. So you would open up each of these, and so you'd paste the business report right here, uh, starting in A2, and make sure when you're pasting this that you're uh, not getting the incorrect columns, so double check that all the columns match. Then after you do that, you wanna paste sponsor products, advertising product report, uh, then bulk operations, sponsor brands, video, or sponsor brands report, sponsor display, advertise product report, then your FBA inventory report. And then the last step you wanna take before you get into the actual analysis is you wanna hide all of these just to save yourself some time. 
So now you'll only have the uh, tabs that line up with the green. So promote products, optimize SKUs, manage inventory, and then manage account. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's get into it. So this template's already filled out. Uh, I did it before beforehand and I use real client data. So a lot of it is gonna be hidden, but I wanted to give everyone a clear understanding of exactly what's going on. So we're gonna start by going into promote products. And what you can see here is we can actually take a look and see, oh, okay, interesting. Well, how are our products doing? What's going on? You know, how many units are we selling? How many, like all the, all the key metrics are all gonna be calculated for you right here. You can also expand these and get more data if you really want to drill down on a specific metric. But the things we're actually looking for right here are, okay, great. Well, what are our ordered product sales? What are our organic sales? What are our organic sales percentage? And then, you know, how are we trending? Like, how are things looking? How are the other metrics looking? Like, do we have good ACOS? Do we have solid tacos? All those kinds of metrics are what really need to, need to be measured here. And if we can, oh, and actually one of the easiest things, if you want to just see, so I made the goal, uh, the organic sales percentage to be above 50%. So I'll just go um, OPS, organic, organic percentage. I made this flexible, so you don't actually need to do this. Uh, you can have your own goals, whatever you feel suits your needs. Oh, I guess you could probably need to write some before you do something like that. And then, uh, so then we're going to do the same thing here. Pull sum, organic sales percentage, or organic sales all the way to here. And then equals, oops, <laughs> uh, All right, so we're at 57%, which is great news, but also uh, if it wasn't great news, then I would start drilling into this and saying to myself, hmm, okay, well, which SKUs are we really crushing it on? Which ones are we missing? Like, are there some really high selling SKUs where we have high tacos? That could be a symptom of low organic sales percentage. Are there some uh, ASINs in here that have really weak uh, PPC conversion rates? That could be a sign that, um, or alternatively, do we have any products that are making way too much of their sales from PPC? That might be a sign that we're actually cannibalizing our own products. Maybe we're spending way too much money on our branded terms, and we actually would make more money by not spending so much money on our branded terms. Uh, so in general, these are the kinds of things you could be looking for. Um, uh, we are proactively growing the PPC sales on this account as we had a long out of stock period, so we had to turn off all ads. So at one point, this was <laughs> two months ago, this was 90%. So in general, we're actually quite happy to see we're hanging out around 57%. Um, but all that to be said, um, that is how we would use the promote products to keep a look or take a look at this. Now, another thing we could be doing is we could be looking at um, something like our ads or sorry, our ACOS here. That's another common goal for ACOS. Um, so we could just do something like, uh, yeah, we could just do add two more columns, all add spend, all add sales. Suppose it would probably be a little bit easier to keep track of that if uh, it costs. So our A cost is 34%. Now, if our goal was 30%, we would say we're off track right now because this is not in line with what our goal was in the beginning. Now we might want to quickly look in and say, okay, well, where are we spending too much money? Is there anywhere where we're getting hurt? Uh, and you know, this this column right here will obviously be your best friend. Yeah, it looks like this specific ASIN, now I know this ASIN is currently being launched, but this specific ASIN is actually beating us up quite badly, and this one as well. Um, and if we take a look, our ad spend is high, our ad sales are not that high, our 
and our ACOS and TACOs are quite high. So that's probably one of the first places I'd look to see if there's a reason why we're not hitting our goals. So then what we would do is we'd jump over here and uh, over 50% of our sales are coming from organic, so on track. Um, cut spend on our uh, PPC launches and invest in conversion er, and optimize for conversions. Okay, now that kind of leads us perfectly into SKU optimization. So we'll jump over here to optimize ASINs and what you'll see is uh, we have, well actually I'm going to pause the video real quick. All right, we're back. All right, so uh, now what we're looking at is we're looking at the same kind of thing, but now we've got unit session percentage and all ad type conversion rate highlighted. And what we're really looking at here is we're trying to see things like, um, are we not converting enough? Uh, now, this is a funny instance where we are converting higher from ads than we are from organic traffic. I think the reason for that is we are currently getting an absolute boatload of traffic from both um, editorial marketing as well as being one of the best sellers on Amazon. So we get a lot more sessions than the average product would now. And that's what's been leading to um, <clears throat> these kind of low looking conversion rates relative to ads. But what we're looking at here is just, okay, how are we doing on ads? Are we converting at a level that we are happy with? Are we seeing the results that we're looking for? And then really just using these other metrics to drill down. And again, you can uh, undo some of these columns. You can get even more data. You can look for things that are, um, that are giving you better information or less information. And then the other thing you can do is you can also filter if you want and start to filter only for things with a certain conversion rate or filter for things that are only above a certain percentage of tacos or something like that. Um, but realistically, the biggest thing we're looking at here is what is our unit session percentage and how well are we doing compared to everything else? So uh, in our example, we've been saying that we'd like an average unit session percentage across the entire account of 15%. So sessions, units, USP, uh, equals sum. There we go. Oh, probably need to use uh, the bracket correctly. Right here. And our unit session percentage average right now is 12%. So we are below our goal. And it seems like we would need to step things up a little bit. So when we take a look at this, we're probably going to look and see, well, which of our products would we be able to make the biggest changes on? So one example right here is our best seller. So our best seller has a ton of traffic coming in. And while that is great, if we could find a way to increase our conversion rate, we could, and we could take this up to 15%, think about how much better of a result that would be. I mean, a 3% lift in conversion rate is no joke, but given that we're converting at 25%, almost 26% from ads, it looks like there's probably some room for improvement and we just need to figure out what it is that's getting people to not convert when they come through. So with that said, um, I would probably come back over to the SOP steps right here and say, um, uh, perform, competitor analysis and look for next steps on how to increase conversion rate on the best seller. Bring next steps to next week's meeting. Okay, and so now we've got a next step here, something that's actionable and pretty straightforward. And if, uh, and if you're the CEO, you definitely want to give this person a time box. So in this example, I said we should get this done by next week's meeting. But maybe this is you still give yourself a deadline. Say, I need to get this done by next Wednesday or whatever else. 
Then um, once you've been able to figure out, okay, well, how are we doing on SKU optimization? The next thing is manage inventory. So we'll jump over here and same as before, we're looking at uh, the inventory reports that we have and then taking a look at our available quantity, our sales price and our days of supply. One of the easiest things you can do here is you can filter and then look for days of supply, maybe just go A to Z and uh, just see, okay, well, we've only got five days of supply and that's 348 units. Now, right now, Amazon's saying no excess inventory, which is kind of surprising to me, given that there's uh, only five days worth of stock. I would think it would say go to restock, but maybe they're just, uh, maybe this is a very slow moving product. Then kind of moving along here, moving along, this 24, 24 days of stock and Amazon's recommending you restock. When you take a look and you see only 84 units, that's something I might jump on pretty quickly. Uh, right here, I know this is a multi-pack of the best seller and it's telling us to go to restock. That's probably worth it. Um, so I would just go in there and make some notes. Just say, uh, we are on track, but there are a few products at risk of OOS. Uh, make sure we have plans for sending in more inventory. Great, and now we've been able to take care of the inventory management. I mean, the, the bigger thing is all the activities that need to happen after inventory management, because there's probably gonna be 10, 15, 20 minutes per product where you need to check inventory levels, check your 3PL, contact your supplier, set contact a shipper, get shipping quotes. There's a lot of steps that happen after this, and that's why we have so much respect for inventory management here at Lantra. But the biggest thing in this meeting is just making sure that we are coming with a plan on how to stay in stock 100% of the time. And then last step is managing the account. Um, this is one that often gets overlooked. And the biggest thing we need to do here is check for these three things. The biggest thing is account health. Because if you click into account health on Amazon and you see that there are several things where you've got that uh, exclamation point in a triangle, that is usually a big problem. So we definitely want to be on top of that. Then performance notifications, those can be deadly. We want to make sure that we don't have any of those. And if you ever do have one of those, you act on it as quickly as possible. And then messages. Um, we don't want to have any messages over the 24 hour limit with no responses. And if we do happen to have any of those, we want to make sure that we have a plan for how that's not going to happen next time. And so the ones and zeros are just to make sure you noted that you checked and did it. And then on track, on track, on track. And so we'd come back here and we just write on track. And then last step is a uh, performance review. So, Really, that is this data collection process. So if you have someone who is filling out the worksheet and has it filled out every time or every week on time for the meeting, that's going to be the key thing to make sure that this process works. Uh, we like to run this process at least once a week on every single account. Most of the time we do it asynchronously, asynchronously through uh, a tool called Asana. You can do it without Asana. But the thing that we like about Asana is it can be done in a way where there's always a record of what happened. So that's how we run this process and we run it pretty frequently, but especially in the beginning when we're first getting started on an account. So as long as you have someone who is able to manually collect this data for you every single week, you are good to go. So then you need to put on track or you need to be willing to do it yourself, which if you're willing to do it, then you are good to go. Okay. So then we've been able to take care of all these things and we've been able to uh, follow the steps here. Now we have them all written in uh, nice little writing as well, just so that you can have a reminder in case you don't want to watch this video again. I mean, we are getting pretty long, so that looks good. Uh, and this is a quick screenshot of what it looks like inside of Lantra. Um, we've got uh, Paranase and Child Ace in an image. It's really nice to have images inside of the tool. Um, sadly, I can't show you today because the images will pull up uh, 
our client's information, so we can't really do that. And then the last step, after you've made notes about what needs to happen, is to do the who, what, where, when, why. Um, I mean, we all, or every, anyone who went to school in North America had to do this, like the who, what, where, when, why, basic journalism stuff. The real plan is not just to make sure that we have a plan for everything. We need to write who will do it, what will be done, where it will be done, when it will be done, and why it will be done. And then if there is conversation amongst team members and there is miscommunication or somebody doesn't, doesn't agree, then the person who plays CEO uh, or person who is the strategic planner is the tiebreaker. They're the decision maker and they need, they need to be the one who makes the decision to push this thing forward. So if our organic sales were below 50%, and one person wanted to reduce ad spend and the other person wanted to spend more money on ranking campaigns, the CEO or the strategic planner, whoever is playing that role, would be the one who made the final decision and said, we're doing this, we're doing that. You can't leave this meeting like without making one of those decisions. So there is a lot of pressure on the strategic planner to make decisions. But the point of this is the data should make it pretty obvious what the best next step will be. Okay, so... That is the entire process. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is just show you how this looks in Lantra. So this is, uh, this is exactly how the tool works. You can just come in here and all this data is collected for you automatically all the time. As you can see, child ASIN and parent ASIN are hidden. We do have image and a lot of other stuff in there, but it is all currently uh, in this section right here. So if you've never seen Tableau, this is what Tableau looks like. It's an unbelievably powerful tool. And if you know how to use Excel, you'll find this to be a breeze. So all these other, un or all these other helpful pieces of information can be pulled in here. A great example, uh, you can pull in page views, you can pull in organic sales, organic units, um, refunds, your restocking fees, all of your different fees. You can break down each individual ad type any way you want and just keep track of all these really, really helpful metrics all in one spot. And then you can also create your own metrics. That's the best part. You know, we, uh, we create all kinds of fun metrics like cost per acquisition and then also daily cost to rank. Just being able to put together these different numbers in one spot um, are just so powerful. So this... This would take away that entire manual data collection. Uh, we just pull your data for you all the time and it's really great. Um, then we optimize ASINs here. Uh, pretty similar, you can see unit session percentage, all ad types, conversion rate. Uh, you can move things around if you want. If you want your organic sessions to be over here instead, or sorry, your organic sales percentage to be over here instead. You can just do whatever you want. Um, really helpful and a really, really fun tool to use. And then just like we were talking about before, manage inventory, you can easily sort by uh, days of supply or anything else, keep track of what's happening inside your account without too much issue, and use the tool to make your life easier, make data collection no longer a thing in your business, and uh, make it so that you never have to worry about what metrics are being tracked. So final steps are to do this. And then if you're looking for something else, there are a couple other things you can do. Uh, we have a tool called how to, or sorry, we have another article coming out. It will be out by the time I put this video up and it's called how to un-F your Amazon account, first fixes and golden nuggets. So it's the next process that we would follow in our uh, LAMP process after we get ourselves a baseline. So we'll go in there and find those golden nuggets in your account. And to be frank, kind of unf a lot of the things that have happened in most Amazon accounts. So a lot of good opportunities there. Then on top of that, we've got our shameless offer. You can check out our tool, Launcher Analytics. Uh, if you click here, you can book a great call with me. I'd be happy to demo the tool for you. And then our other shameless sub, sub offer. Uh, if this sounds like a lot of work and you want us to do it for you, We've got a done for you full account management offer that uh, our agency does. So we would love to talk to talk to you about that and see if it's a good fit. Again, no, nothing is required. All these tools are free, uh, or rather all these spreadsheets are free. Lantra is not free. 
Uh, but all these tools are free and we want you to be successful with them. Please don't hesitate, hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions. Uh, we really hope that you find this as helpful as it's been for us. And I will talk to you soon.